What's your name? My name is Robert Rivera. Nice to meet you. And why did you come out today? Uh, but yeah, I'm here to learn and absorb and see, see what new tips I can learn. Awesome. And where are you from? I'm from Miami, Florida. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming out here today. Hey y'all, I'm here at uh, Tactical Sonar. I remember me asking you guys if you wanted to see me do a rigging video of my boat. Well, I kind of, I kind of, uh, whew, I didn't do what I said I was going to do. Yeah. Who's talking about that? Yeah. Who's talking about and that? It's, uh... Hey guys, so even tactical sonar, in addition to putting in electronics, poles, and all that stuff, if you've got a bay boat like this one and you want to get it lit up, check out this job. I think everybody's into uh, get some kind of custom lighting on the boat here. What type of lights was this one? What these you, are you were telling? Southern light LEDs. Southern light LEDs. And you can, were these the ones you said you could change colors on? Or? These are not color changing. Uh, the ones on the inside, you can put them on a dimmer. Okay. So you can make them more bright. You can dim them if you're night fishing. The ones on the outside, this customer didn't want that. Because okay. um, he just didn't really have a need to dim them on the outside. But the ones on the inside kind of blinds you at night. And it's more like it can all fade at night. Oh, that's what he's doing that yeah. for. It's not just pretty. Uh -huh. Oh! Okay, I thought it was just for pretty. My guy doing it to, to bring the bait in. We'll move over to my boat. Y'all know I, I usually do my boat super simple when it comes to electronics. Um, I, I don't know, that's just the way I am. It just seems the way it works for me. The past couple years, I've ran two Lowrance units. I've ran a, a Lowrance on the console, or Lowrance on the bow, and a Garmin on the bow. And this year, I'm only doing two units this year. I'm doing one on the bow, one on the console. And a lot of that has to do with just, um, I've just been kind of paying attention to how much I'm actually using my units. And I think I could have went the whole season last year without, without the extra unit on the bow. And for me, the cleaner my bow is, the better, just the more confident I am. I don't like stepping around my units. But that's just my personal preference. I'm not saying anything about anybody that runs four, five, six, seven, eight graphs. I, I don't really care what you do. I'm just saying for me and the way that I like to fish, it just seems like the less I run, just the more happy I am. Here at the console, I decided to do my unit flush mount. Flush mount. All right, so not too many people flush mount anymore. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't really have this whole complicated reason why I flush mount. The main thing is just convenience. There is some downsides to flush mounting. One being is when your unit's in there, it's in there like it's in there. You can't change it, you can't move it, you can't tilt it this way, that way, move it around, it's there. Which is some of the reason that I leave it there because when I park my boat, I don't worry about somebody unhooking my grass and walking off with them, right? But um, there is some downsides you can't really see. Like if I'm driving, you know, you can't see all of the mapping or the graph. So if, it, if you're a person, if you're a person that sits behind the console and drives a bunch and graphs a bunch, I probably wouldn't flush mount. Um, but there's definitely some downsides to flush mounting for sure. Uh, the console Falcon's pretty, uh, hey, did we run NEMA to this thing or no? Yes. No, I did. Yes. That's good. You'll notice I don't have any gauges. I got the Mercury, mm -hmm. the Merc monitor here. Mm -hmm. I got the, this is for my jack plate, yep. jack plate gauge. Yep. You know, there's no miles per hour, no, no RPM gauge, none of that, no tack at all. I can actually go into my unit here. Uh, where do I go, Paul? I go to- You can go to your gauges here, or you can oh, okay. just go to your chart. Uh, and then basically go in and overlay your engine data. Over um, any, just about any, any of those things. Yeah. Unfortunately, what you gotta have, you gotta have your engine. You got <laughs> look, look, we got nobody at home back there. <laughs> Ain't nobody at home. Really, the only thing that I care about most of the time is tack and water pressure. And so I get that from my Merc monitor anyway, so I don't really care to have a bunch of gauges. That's a personal preference. 
I get everything that I need from Merck Monitor, but in, in the event that I did want, like say if I was traveling, if I was riding 70, 80 miles, I probably would just turn my graph to mapping and, and my gauges and just look at them on my graph. That way you can tell your speed, kind of kind of fine tune where you're running your engine on your jack plate and props and stuff and stuff like that. But otherwise, I don't really see, I feel like gauges is kind of like an outdated thing. I don't even think, they only run gauges in a cup car, a NASCAR, I don't think so. We may have a few, but it's not that much. It's not much that really matters. Paul put on here, um, I got Lawrence HDS 12 up front, just one unit, but I do still have, I still have, I'm running active target this time. Um, last year I ran, I ran the Garmin Live Scope and you know, it was fine, but I've been in other boats with the active target and I felt like the image was maybe a little clearer. I feel like I don't know if you agree with this, Paul, but I feel like the active target, the the dot or the bait, it looks different. It's a it different does. arch. It it's does. more vertical, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. So is that me or is it really like It's more of a defined edge. And here, the biggest difference that we see, we install both, sell both and everything, but the biggest thing that we see is on a hard bottom or a soft bottom, the Garmin has, looks like little ticklers on the very bottom, which makes it very hard to see. See the a fish. fish. On the bottom. Right. The active target actually has a very hard line. It's slick. And you can see the little humps. Okay. And it looks like little inchworms just crawling yeah. along the bottom. For me, all right, this is just, just my personal, all I'm giving you is my personal opinion because I've run both for quite some time now. I've always, Lawrence has always had exceptional 2D sonar, which is what I use a lot of. I feel like it's always had the best 2D sonar. I like the platform a lot better, if that's the right word to use for it. The interface, user interface, what I'm talking about is when I turn it on, I'm moving things around and, and making settings. I've always felt like it was easier for me to do that with Lawrence, but some of that may be skewed because that's what I grew up using. Let's start digging into some of the specifics. Paul here at, at uh, Paul and his crew here at Tactical Sonar, they rigged my boat. Is this year three or two? Two? Two. At least two, year two. Done some one-off stuff for me, like install trolling motors and stuff like that for me in the past, but the last two years, let them rig my boat. And uh, he can kind of tell you more about what we did. I just kind of tell him I want this and this, and then he figures out how to get it to get power to it is the biggest deal. So we both are pretty picky about what we run for cranking batteries, what we run for trolling motor batteries. It's both costs us a lot of money, especially you pretty much. You know, our worst fear on the water is being stranded. Yeah, I can't stand that. No I'm graphs, no mapping. That. If we're somewhere, if you're in the Potomac or if you're at Wisconsin and you don't have mapping, uh, you're, you're in yeah. trouble. Mapping is more important. Every, everybody yeah. fusses about forward facing. If you really want to handicap an angler, get, take away the mapping. Yeah. I mean, it don't matter how much forward facing yeah. you got. If you don't have mapping, it yeah. makes fishing harder. Yeah. Uh, on the trolling motor side, he is using the Miller Tech uh, 31 series battery. Um, so he is taking care of all everything's hooked up charging now he has a standard charger pretty much for the Militex and the AGMs where did I um, put my charger it's right oh, it's there back in there yeah. Yeah. way back yonder yeah. is my so charger right there like, yeah it's hidden but it's, you know, it's hidden, but at the same time I can still see the light so I know if yeah. something's working or not working absolutely, absolutely. that's important um, so what we try to do is one of our my pet peeves, being the owner, and Aiden is my shop manager, and he knows my little pet peeves. There's Aiden right there. <laughs> the man, the man, man the myth, the legend. Uh, so we take pride in all of our work being extremely neat, and you can see um, if you had to guess how many zip ties we go through in a install setup, everything else. We, you know, it's usually sometimes every three inches, every two inches five inches six inches whatever it takes to get everything super clean nice neat so everything is secured and there's no way pretty much anything can get out of place I tell the story all the time two years ago i had a cranking battery issue for since the beginning of the time i've run one cranking battery in my boat for as much money as i fished for and as much time i got invested in a tournament i have no idea why i would not run two cranking batteries i don't and it just hit me when i don't know if you suggested or it just yep. hit me yep. i don't know remember what happened yep. i think paul is just like yeah we could just rig two batteries parallel i was like you big dummy why would you not do that 
Yeah, so that's the big thing is, is the way we're thinking of it, the amount of money that we're, we're fishing for is there is no reason to cut corners and let a $400 battery cut. Yeah. No, there's no excuse no for that. No excuse no, for that. It, I'm in the same boat you are. I, I parallel two side by side, and I am i don't even blink about it. Yeah. On this year's boat, I got, um, for the graphs, I did run the Sea Clear power harness. I know people probably wonder, like, is that real? Do you really need to have that? Do you need to have it? Do you have to have it? No. I can honestly say that I did see a difference when I ran that last year. I ran it for the first time last year, 2022 season. First, as soon as I turned my graphs on, I definitely noticed that my side imaging, in particular the 3D stuff, was way clearer. I don't know how it works. I'm sure Paul could tell you how it worked and like the, the short synopsis of it, there's just a short of it. Don't know, don't care. All I know is everything was way clearer. Like if you want to give them just like the short version yep, of what's yep. going on, like the um, it, it did make a difference for me. Yeah, so basically the, the short of it is uh, up until about three years ago, all boat manufacturers put in uh, 16 to 18 gauge wire. So what happens is they run a 16, 18 gauge wire up to the console, that's just for the graphs. Uh, then you're basically splitting off of a 10 gauge wire. And what happens, you got your bills, your aerator, your lights, all of that thing on the same line. So I'm sure everybody knows is and you, on your boat three years ago, when we went out, I think we were shooting video or something, oh, yeah, but when yeah. you crank, when you crank your boat, your graphs flash. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know, they flash. Yep. Well, that's insufficient wire size. In other words, it can't hold the current yeah. that's going. So what's happening is every time you're hitting the motor, it's flashing that unit. Especially it's having that a stroke. Jolt. Exactly. It's having a stroke. If it keeps doing that below 10.5 numerous times, what's going to happen is that grass can start to suffer. Is we come up here and we'll look. Is we run it up to the bow, and then we come all the way back through, and we put in a bus here. And what that bus is, is we run our main power here, eight gauge here, eight gauge here, top to bottom. We've got all of our negatives and all of our positives here. So anytime, if something ever happens and Brian blows a fuse, there's a light that comes on here. We always put our extra fuses in here. So let's just say that for some odd reason, he spears a wave, he gets water in, he blows a fuse. He never has to take anything apart up front. Yeah, that's so that's easy. he can change the fuse right here in five seconds and he's back on the water. So what uh, the, he installed my Bob's jack plate. I always run a hydraulic jack plate. People mostly talk about jack plates and getting in the shallow water. Yes, for me, it's more about weight distribution. When I when I got a lot of weight in my boat, between four live wheels and 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 a, a big guy and all that kind of stuff, I can kind of put my motor down and get the bow of the boat up a little bit more. Or if I'm in a creek and I need to kind of have a little bit more control over my boat. People don't talk about it, but that for me, that's the most important part of running a hydraulic jack plate is being able to adjust on the fly. If I'm by myself, sometimes when I have a Marshall, I can let my jack plate up, get as many RPM as I want, get another mile an hour or two. Yeah. Um, I didn't really do anything else to my boat. I keep it pretty simple. Um, I got power poles. Ah, you got it. You know, I got power poles. I prefer the power poles over the um, what else? We got the Raptors or anything like, like that. I just had I had good luck out of my power poles. That's what I've been running. Of course, they got hydraulic lines. Everything is run nice and smooth. You can see how you can see how everything is all runs together and comes out. There's no. I got my plumbing and everything coming right out here. Oh, oh, that's my power pole. This is my hydraulic steering. Yeah, that's your hydraulic steering. Yeah. These are your power poles on each side. Side. Yep. Right to right to the pole. It's nice. The reason I like this is because my hydraulic lines aren't bent. A lot of times, mm -hmm. when they come out of the rigging pipes, now it's got to make almost a ninety degree mm -hmm. turn to get back to your poles. Over yep. time, that's just going to wear. Yep. That's going to wear on your hydraulic fittings and hoses. Yep. Mine is just right there, coming straight out of the poles. I haven't had any problems out of that. I like that a lot better. Then I'm gonna get the candy red jack plate this time. So. Yep. All right, it's finally over. I pretty much got my boat completely rigged and ready for the tournament season. As a matter of fact, probably by the time you see this video, I will already have finished 
fishing my first tour event for the season, my major league fishing invitationals. Uh, so hopefully I'll have a big check by the time. Maybe I'll win. I don't know. I feel I have a really good feeling about this year. I think it's going to be a good year for me. I'm excited. We're always going to the year excited anyway. But if you're looking to get anything installed on your boat electronic-wise, Tactical Sonar. Paul Gate is a Tactical Sonar. They specialize in just electronics. That's all they do is electronics. Anything electrical on your boat, Paul is a man. He understands that stuff to a science. Only person I've let touch my boat when it comes to rigging the last three years. So uh, check it out. He's customized my boat to my liking. I always encourage people. I know right now electronics are a very contentious subject. For you guys that are just getting into fishing, uh, you don't really understand that much about electronics. Let me help you a little bit. Understanding the basic things about electronics is a schoolmaster to understanding the more complicated things about sonar. The side imaging, understanding how to read for facing sonar. If you haven't really mastered 2D sonar and the very basic idea and premise of using electronics, it's a good idea to maybe keep it simple. You notice I fish for a living. I have two units on my boat. It's very cool to run around with five, six units on your boat. Some people actually do need that. I can almost promise you if you're a weekend angler, it's probably gonna be too much for you to absorb the information that four or five units can give you. I would highly encourage you to start small. Start with two graphs, one on the bow, one on the console. Learn how to use those. And then once you learn and understand how to take that information that the graphs feed you and turn that into a day of fishing, then it makes sense for you to then branch out. Get forward facing sonar. Get the active target. Get the live scope. Get side imaging. And then start implementing that into your fishing but learn how to use and implement and make very basic sonar readings learn how to implement that into your fishing i promise you it's going to be it's going to make fishing a lot more fun actually it adds an extra layer of interest to it for me so that would be my advice when it comes to electronics customize your electronics for the way you fish Okay, that's what I'm doing in here, and that's what I showed you in this video. Appreciate you guys watching the video. Uh, we got a couple that's more boat problem. videos coming out, uh, talking about uh, the performance part of it. We're going to start testing some props on my boat and see how they run as well.